All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's guest is Jamie Edidon, who will be taking on uh, MMA veteran uh, Janae Harding, who's fought in Bellator. Uh, if you don't know what Bellator is, probably listening to the wrong podcast. Uh, no, Bellator is basically like the Pepsi to the Coke that is uh, the UFC. Uh, Janae Harding has had an incredible career, and she's uh, coming back. Uh, fighting uh, September 16th, uh, Beat Down Promotions 5, and Jamie Edidon is taking on her. Uh, cracker of a fight. She's very, very exciting. Uh, it's a featherweight bout. Uh, so we got Jamie to uh, jump on and have a chat. Uh, she chats about uh, her involvement with uh, Ignite uh, in uh, in Queensland. Uh, of course, uh, her role in the Dunstan Death Squad, which is uh, really, really emerging of a whole bunch of great fighters. Of course, you got the Hex Bantamweight Champion Sean Gauchi, the former Eternal MMA Lightweight Champion David Martinez, the former Eternal MMA Middleweight Champion John Martin Frazier. There's so many guys uh, and gals that are that are a part of that 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 team. Um, and uh, well, it's also good to have Jamie because she's just. Uh, shoots pretty straight, which is good. She tells you uh, why she got into MMA, which is a bit of a sad story, uh, but it's good to have her in. Uh, and of course, she was uh, at least made famous to me uh, with a controversial fight cancellation uh, at Beat Down at Promotions in March against Annie Thatcher, who's an up and coming fighter. Uh, she's a much lighter weight, uh, a much lighter fighter, and uh, they hadn't agreed upon weight. And Jamie will go into this as well. Uh, this will be her side as well. But you can see Annie Thatcher. If you go onto her Instagram, you can scroll down and see that as well. Then they had an agreed fight at like 63 and a half kilo, 64. That was a bit of an allowance. Uh, either way, uh, anyway, uh, Jamie weighed over. Uh, and uh, the fight was actually cancelled. And it was very, very, very controversial. Uh, very polarizing. It split everyone down the middle. Uh, with you know, oh, it was only a hundred grams, but there's another side of the story of of um of uh, the weight difference anyway. With Annie Thatcher coming up, um, and then there was some agreements behind the scenes on on who should weigh what, and and, and like a whole bunch of stories. Anyway, I won't I won't bog you down uh, too much. We'll get uh, we'll get Jamie's side of it as well. And like I said, hit up Annie Thatcher uh, on Instagram. You can find the post to see her side of it as well but we do of course talk about uh the fight against uh janae harding and, and just how exciting that can be a beat down promotions five uh september 16th i think i as i throw to the interview i'll probably say the exact same thing again so without further ado ladies and gentlemen jamie edenden ladies and gentlemen welcome to the show jamie edenden how's that <laughs> That was good that was good for a first try that was good it, it does sound like a stutter like a d-d-d-d-d. <laughs> <laughs> no you did well you did well no it's good and as a as a former ring announcer names like that petrify me that seem like they should be easy but they're tricky yeah there's too many a's and d's and n's and uh, yeah it's confusing but it's all right well, well look i'm really excited to have you on the show because you'll be taking on uh, janae harding in a featherweight main <laughs> event uh september 16th uh beat down promotions five at eaton hills hotel in queensland first of all just uh as a fighter in general uh, main event of a show. How does it feel? It feels, this is my first uh, main event as an MMA fighter. Mm-hmm. So it feels pretty, pretty freaking cool, especially being a woman in the sport. You know, you don't see women headlining MMA events um, anywhere really in Australia and, and sometimes not even in the UFC and, and events like that. So it's pretty freaking epic. And against someone like Janae Harding, I mean, have you followed much of her career? Yeah, man, I followed her for ages. I mean, I was just I was just telling my coach the other day that I followed her way back when she used to box and when she first started her MMA career. So so I've known about Janae for a long time and and I remember back then I was like, I'm gonna fight her one day, you know, like I'm I'm gonna be in the cage across from her one day and here it is. Is that your preferred weight class? Um, no. So I would prefer to fight at lightweight. <laughs> um I I'm quite a big girl and getting to featherweight is actually quite a struggle for me. Um, but unfortunately there's just not any girls at that, at that weight. So getting to featherweight is it. So. Well, I mean, in no other, no other realm in the world, can you ask a girl to work her walking around weight, but like, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> oh, this gets brought up a lot. And I mean, when I'm, when I'm in fight camp, I'm in the seventies, um, when I'm outside of fight camp, it's, it's in the, in the late seventies. Um, and that's me still pretty lean. So, um, yeah, it's, 
it's hard to get to featherweight. So, but I get there and I do it and, and yeah. I mean, fights would be one thing, but even training partners, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go out in here and assume that you're not mixing up with too many girls in the gym. Um, I don't really train with any girls. I do all of my training with guys. Um, I've got a couple of girls that come up uh, from our sister gym or brother gym, whatever you want to call it, down at Gamebred. Um, so I've got a, a lady, Liz, uh, found me, found me, I can never say her last name. I'm just going to call her Liz. Um, <laughs> she's a heavyweight. Uh, so she, I get some good rounds in with her. But apart from that, all of my training is with dudes. So yeah, I like I, it. Yeah. That was a that's a good X factor about this beat down promotions fight. I love Damien Brown, the fights he puts on. I don't think in the history of ever me watching watching mixed martial arts have I seen a heavyweight women's bout. Yeah. Dude, she hits <laughs> like she hits harder than anyone I've ever been hit by. And I I spar with some big dudes. <laughs> She is one strong lady. <laughs> well, yeah, out of the old Dunstan death squad, uh, what's it like <laughs> training there with with everyone? <laughs> Um, it's sick, man. It's sick. We've got some killers in here, you know, like we've got the likes of John Fraser and Dave Martinez and Jake Parker, and we've even got Sean Gauchy on our team now. So, you know, I train with the best in Australia. So, um, I'm coming in, coming into this fight on point training are with you, all those dudes. So are you manhandling Sean Gauchy, you can tell me. Absolutely. Absolutely. He, he is weak. He is a weak <laughs> little boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I've turned it into a quote already. <laughs> now, when you when you're preparing for someone like Janae Harding, I mean, what are you, what are you doing going in? Like what's what's the thought process? Look, this is this is a hard fight to prepare for because Janae is good everywhere. She's she's a good striker, she's a good wrestler, she's good on the ground, she's had bucket loads of experience fighting on the world stage, you know, she's fought the best of the best. So so preparing for her isn't easy, um, but we've we've come up with a game plan that that um, that I think is going to get to her. So I'm keen to keen to show that. Is there anything of her game plan? Oh, sorry, of her game just in general that you think uh, you can exploit? And is there any part of her game that you think is something to worry about? Um, she definitely, I feel, as I said, is good in every area. So I feel like she does have holes in her game, um, but the holes are very small. Uh, and that comes from experience and, and, and her knowledge of the sport and just being around for so long. So it's going to be hard for me to crack her. Um, but yeah, there's definitely holes, but as I said, it's going to be a tough one. And uh, how's the weight cut going? <laughs> I always get this question. I'm freaking hungry, dude. I'm hungry as. <laughs> well, you probably don't get the follow-up question um, because, unfortunately, I was first introduced to your career after a not-so-great weight cut. Being back on Beatdown Promotions, can you talk us through yeah. the the very controversial fight with Annie Thatcher, or the one that didn't happen? Exactly. There was a bit of confusion. Yeah. I've only ever seen one side of it. Uh, can you give us a quick overview of you weighed a little bit over of the agreed weight? The fight eventually got cancelled. Can you give us sort of the the summary and, and and your side of that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I haven't really had the opportunity to to tell my side of the story, um, but you know, there is always two sides mm. to a story. Um, so unfortunately, I did miss weight and I missed by 100 grams. Um, when I first agreed to take the fight with Annie, uh, she wasn't prepared to come up to featherweight and I wasn't prepared to go down to bantamweight. So we had agreed to meet in the middle at 64. Um, I knew that it was going to be extremely hard for me to get to that weight because it's already hard for me to get to featherweight. But at that point in time, I had no other fight opportunity. So I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to try my best. Um, I did a four month camp for that fight and I tried to get my body weight down to, to a point where I could make 64. Um, and I tried, I tried really, really hard, um, to get there. And I ended up coming in hundred grams over. Um, and in the scheme of things, doesn't sound like much, but um, obviously to Annie's team, 100 grams, it was a lot um, to them and we just couldn't come to an agreement. So from our end, um, we we offered up my, my fight purse. Um, I was prepared to fight for zero money just to get the fight across the line and they didn't agree to that. Um, they did come to an agreement of me having to weigh a certain weight the next day. So they wanted me to come in at a certain weight um, the next day at the fight show. And I just, we couldn't agree to it because it just wouldn't have been healthy for me. I wouldn't have been able to be fully hydrated for the fight and it wouldn't have been healthy. So we had to say no to that. Um, and then we had come to an agreement and, and on Friday night when I went to bed, the fight was on. Um, so I was pumped about that. And then I woke up the next day and her team decided they weren't going to take the fight. So 
yeah, that was pretty, pretty heartbreaking, but I mean, it is what it is. They're well within their right to say no, because I did miss weight. So um, yeah. I mean, here's, here's what I know from, from my side and you, you just tell me if this is correct or incorrect. I believe the fight was agreed at 63.5 with a 500 gram allowance. Um, and then when you weighed over, I think the next, the, the agreed upon weight for the next day, or the, well, I think the weigh in day, uh, sorry, the fight day weight was 69 kilos. And you said that wasn't, uh, going to be healthy. Are, are those numbers correct? It was, I think from memory, I think it was 68, not 69, but it could yep. have been 69. I think from memory it was 68. And just for me to be fully rehydrated, I mm-hmm. wouldn't have been able to come in at 68, um, being, being, you know, having to cut weight to that way. Um, so yeah, yeah, that is correct in it, one or two kilos. Yeah. Is, is there ill will there? Like, have you guys spoken since? Um, no, not at all. I, um, I would love the opportunity to fight Annie again. I know that she's gone overseas and and went in, in some amateur competition. Um, I would love to fight Annie again or have the opportunity to fight her again. But it, unless she's going to come up to featherweight, it's just not an option. Um, and I'm not going to try and kill myself to try and get to a weight again that I can't get to. So, is um, nah, this is this is a weird one as well. But I, I, I'll put it to you before we before we move it aside. Um, and now I know they're very biased and very one-sided uh, accounts from other people, but some people said that you were walking in quite heavy a couple of weeks out of that fight. How was the diet for those 12 weeks leading up to that? Cause I believe you did ask for 12 weeks. Yeah. So I, I actually prepared for the fight for four months. Um, and it's no secret to anyone that I, that I don't cut big weight. I do. Everyone knows that everyone knows that I cut weight to get to featherweight. And I tried at a hand on my heart. I, I tried to get down. I tried to get my walk around weight, weight down. Um, and I just couldn't, I, I, I tried and I was starving myself and, and all I can say is I tried and and then I failed. So, you know, I'm taking full responsibility of that. It is a shame that, that we couldn't get the fight across the line. Um, I'm obviously bummed because I just wanted to fight and, and we couldn't get it done and we couldn't come to an agreement, but, yeah, the, the diet was hard. Um, I had to, to to drop back all my strength training, which I hate doing. Um, but it wasn't through lack of trying. And I want everyone to know that because there's a lot of people out there that were saying that I didn't try. And, and you know, I, I just rocked up and I was heavy and I was this and that. And I'm like, it's no surprise that I'm heavy. I'm a big girl. Um, and, and, and I tried. So that's all I can say. Um, I had uh, even heard reports that you were uh, considering shaving your head. Yes, I was. I got to the weigh-in and I weighed in over and I was late to the a little bit late to the weigh-in and I got on the scales and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna shave my head. Just let me go do a pee. I'll shave my head. I don't care. And unfortunately I was told I couldn't. So you told you couldn't have like a uh, you couldn't go away and, and come back to the scale. No, because the 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 cutoff for the weight was uh three o'clock and I got there yeah. at three, so I wasn't allowed to go cut. Anymore. Were you so, in the sauna before or was that why you were late? I was in the sauna all day. <laughs> I was in the sauna <laughs> all day and all night before it. So um, it's definitely not something I, I I would promote for that. And it's not something I want to go into because it's definitely not, not something that's <laughs> healthy. Um, ah. But, it, you know, it is what it is. And I tried and I cut a lot of weight to try and get there. So, yeah. Now, <laughs> if the shoe was on the other foot, same circumstances, would you have taken the fight? It wouldn't have even have been a question for me to not take the fight. Um, the, in my, it just just before in my last fight, so when I fought Gina um, on Eternal a couple of months earlier or six months earlier or whatever, Gina had actually come in well over the limit. She was 1.2 kilos over the limit. Um, and it wasn't even a question to go through my head that I wouldn't fight because I've done I've done this whole camp um, to fight. And, and if you're not going to fight, then you're not going to get the chance to go to the next level. And at the end of the day, if you're turning pro your goal, or I hope your goal, or most people's goal is to get to the next level to fight on the big uh, shows overseas. And if you can't fight, then you don't get the opportunity to showcase your skills. So it wouldn't even be a, a, a thought that runs through my head to not do the fight. So you, uh, you very much respectfully disagree with how she's handled that. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I, 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 they're well within their right to, to, to say no, hundred percent. But over a hundred grams, I feel like, you know, if that was me, I'd be like, I would, I'd be wanting to make that person pay, 
for missing the weight. Well, I mean, look, it's 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 interesting to get your side of it. it sucks that it was months later. I mean, uh, if only I had this rolling earlier. Uh, <laughs> you can always because uh, uh, that's kind of what I want to do is essentially have have that that platform in general because when that did happen, it did make a lot of uh, news. And you do unfortunately only ever get one side. And I'm sure if I had Annie Thatcher on, I'm sure she'd have her thoughts as well and all that sort of stuff. And at the end of the day. I, sometimes you're not going to get people that go, yep, I agree. I don't like, I, I disagree with you and and whatnot, but it is good to hear your side of it mm-hmm. because you, you as a professional would not like your, especially the effort the uh, of trying to, to do it come into question. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's, there was a lot of, um, hate. I got a lot of hate, uh, about that fight and a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, Discussing messages on my social media from obviously from people who, so, yeah, yeah. What, what, what? I, I, I posted a video um, on my page and I got I got a couple of really horrible messages from people. I don't know if they were her supporters or just supporters in general, and I it, and then ended up having to delete the video because it was it was actually freaking gross. But um, at the end of the day you know, I, I don't really care what those people say, say about me. I'm here and I'm, I'm the one that's fighting again and, and doing what I can to get these fights and taking these big fights and, and yeah, so they can say whatever they want, I guess. Well, I mean, moving on to, uh, of course, with, with, with that behind you and, and um, I mean, it is commendable, especially your, your side of it. And your what is apparent is your, your willingness to fight and, who you're fighting is is one of the best sort of females going around. Um, are you at a stage where you're not you're not crafting your career? You're literally just taking any fight you can get. Um, yes and no. Um, it is it is a, at a point in my career where the the fights are very few and far between. Um, like I had to fight Gina twice within six months or seven months or something because there just wasn't any girls. I mean, I'm not I'm going to take that back because there's a lot of girls. Mm. They just don't want to fight me um, or, or they're not, they're saying, they're saying no to me. So um, I don't know what their reasons are. Um, I've, I have a pretty good idea, but I don't know what their reasons are. Um, when Janae got offered me uh, to me or to us, um, it wasn't even, it was a yes. I'm, I'm, I want to fight her because I want to make it to these big promotions. I want to go overseas and I want to fight the best people. It's not just a matter of oh, I'll fight whoever comes. I want to fight the best. And at, at this current time, Janae is the best. So I want her, I want to show that I'm at that level and I'm ready to take on, on the next stage. And in terms of your combat career, I mean, you've, you, you've done so much and, and so much competition and, and whatnot. Where does mixed martial arts really uh, stack up for you? Um, well, yeah, mixed martial arts is it for me. This is what I, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. I want to be, you know, on the PFL or the Bellator and, and, but, because the fights are too few and far between, I have taken boxing fights because I, at the end of the day, I do, I do love fighting and I do love competition and, and I also want to be the best. So if I get offered fights and I don't have anything else coming up in the MMA space, then I'm 100% going to take boxing fights because I don't want to sit on the bench. Um, I want to be active. I want to be fighting. I want experience and I'm not getting any younger. So I'm not going to be turning down fights and opportunities, you know, when, when they come for me. So. I mean, you talk about not getting any younger. I believe you're nearly thirty. What's the plan? Is it is you know getting to that next level still, still on the on the radar, or is it just as many fights as you can? Like, what's the envision? Um, I definitely feel like uh, you know I'm destined for great things. I'm destined to be on on the world stage, and and I know that I'm close. I just got to get a few more wins. Um, get my name out there a little bit more. Um, I think. For- for me, because I started MMA fairly late, I didn't have my first MMA fight till I was like 27 or 28. So I'm still fairly new to the sport. Um, I've got no major injuries. My body's in, in prime condition and, and I'm only just in my prime now. So or only just starting my prime. So I feel like I've got some really good years left in me um, to do some really good things. Well, how's this fight on uh, Beat Down Promotions 5? How, how's this going down? I don't want to give away my game plan um, because, as I said, you know, it's hard to figure out Janae, but I want to put on a show. I mean, in my last fight, I progressed as a fighter and you saw a different, well, people saw a different side of me that they haven't seen before. And and this fight, I'm going to do the same as, as, as long as I keep getting better every fight. But I want to make a statement this time. I want people to be like, fuck, she just beat Janae Harding, who's been on the, on, on the world stage, you know? So, yeah, I'm pumped for that to be able to show, to showcase what I've got. 
I'm, I'm, I'm very close to doing something pretty amazing. And uh, what made you get into this sport to begin with? Um, to Into fighting or into MMA? Yeah, all of it. Into all of it. So I started fighting at a very, I was like 18 when I started and I was just doing it, doing it for fun. Um, and the reason I got into it was to learn self-defense. Um, growing up, I, I didn't have a very good relationship when I was younger and um, that led to me not being able to defend myself. So I didn't, never wanted to be in that kind of position again. So went to a gym, started off just doing fitness classes and the coach is like, damn, you're actually good. You need to have a fight. Um, so I had a couple of fights, about four or five fights. And then I had about five years off where I was focused on my career. I bought a house and had a relationship and all that sort of stuff. And then I came back to it in my late twenties. And, and it wasn't until, until I met um, Ryan Dunstan where he was kind of like, damn, like you need to, like, you could be, you could make something of yourself. Like you're actually good. It's going to be hard work, but like you could actually, you know, be something. So it wasn't until I met my coach that I thought to myself, damn, I could actually be a pro in this sport and and, and be a champion. So. And what makes, uh, I mean, he's really emerging as of like, obviously been around for for a while, but the old Dunstan death squad's doing, uh, doing great things. <laughs> what makes, uh, what makes Ryan Dunstan so good? I've always said, um, I, I don't know whether whether you've heard, but I've just um, actually partnered with with Ryan and um, and gone into business with him. So him and and me and one of our other uh, business partners, Jeremy, have gone into Ignite. So um, when I when I first wanted to do the gym, and Jeremy's like, why do you why do you want to work with Ryan? And and I will to, to, to the grave take this. I think Ryan is the best coach in Australian MMA. His mind, the way that he sees things, the things that he comes up with. Is, is unmatched from what I've ever seen. So, yeah, I, I think that he is the best coach in Australia in MMA. Okay, and then to back that up, what makes Jamie Ederton so special? Damn, she, how many you heard of her? She's pretty damn good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what makes what makes me different is, one, my worth ethic. Work, oh, my God, I can't even talk because I'm hungry, you see. Um, <laughs> work, <laughs> work ethic. I am the hardest worker in the room always i'm always in the gym doing the extra work doing the extra sessions um and 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 asking the questions you know i feel like you can always learn from people even if they're an amateur have only started you know you can learn off everyone um and what else makes me exciting is i'm ex- i'm an exciting fighter when i get in the cage you're always guaranteed or the ring in the cage or the ring you're always guaranteed entertainment and that's why people come to watch me because i'm never in a boring fight and uh after it's all said and done uh, how do you want to be remembered in, in mixed martial arts? I definitely want to um, want to do great things in the sport, but I want people to remember me as 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 someone that didn't give up on their dreams. You know, like I've I've had a lot of shit go on in in my fight career, and um, and I've never given up. I've lost I've lost a lot of fights. I've lost fights that I should have won. But here I am still working. I'm still I'm still trying to get to that next level and I won't stop until I've achieved what I want to achieve. So, um, yeah. Well, Jamie Eden taking on Janae Harding, September 16th, Eden Hills Hotel in Queensland. Beat Down Promotions 5. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks yes, for the in-depth uh, and uh, wish you the best of luck. Uh, enjoy, that you, weight. enjoy that weight cut um, and uh, I'll see you next time. All right. Thank you.